but artificial humans working with artificial intelligence in the first one you can say that it is a machine artificial machine working with artificial intelligence a man is a natural human being working with natural intelligence now i am going to compare sorry, the man sorry. versus hello sorry for the interruption sir yes sir uh, sir actually the presentation is not uh, visible sir uh, can you share it once again sir yeah i have done it no sir here it is not visible uh, you please close the presentation once again and uh, once again represent it sir Yeah. Is it uh, the screen is seen? Y yes, sir. The screen is seen now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it is seen, right? Yes, sir. Now the screen is visible. Visible, sir. Now it is visible. Oh. Thank you, uh, sir. Still, now it was not visible. Uh, initially it was visible sir and suddenly uh, it went off sir okay so, okay thank you thank you now i'd like to uh, resume the session right as i yes, all sir. told you that as i all told you that still now we had a brief interaction with the macro robotics micro robotics macro robotics in the day one micro robotics in the nano robotics in the day two see the concept the various different concepts the techniques that are uh, that were there behind this man machine technology is the artificial intelligence swarm intelligence or the smart intelligence machine learning the internet of things computer vision then the cloud computing quantum computing natural language processing the genetic algorithms and the big data etc now in this session i am going to throw a light uh, into the concepts from the research con research concept point of view commencing from the natural intelligence up to the artificial intelligence and its brief application at the end of the session i would like to give a brief a broad perspective overview of the research trends uh, in the three days uh, webinar that you can start uh, ahead so now this slide gives you the difference between the man and the machine we are natural human beings working with natural intelligence that is a man robots are nothing but machines are nothing but artificial humans working with artificial intelligence now i am going to compare how much is a man intelligence and the artificial intelligence so what is this human intelligence this human intelligence is nothing but a born intelligence it is a combination of various abilities like uh, learning we have got that learning skills if anybody uh, the teacher teaches the student or we teachers and we can easily learn and we can memorize it starting from the day one that is uh, for the starting of the course until the ending of the course even when we are at the younger age even when we are at the small children we remember what are the things that have been taught in the schools and the colleges because that human being has got a very good learning capability in the memory capability so human beings has got infinite memory and that is uh, one of the human intelligence they call it as iq intelligent quotient so some some uh, human beings are highly intelligent some are not highly intelligent it depends on the memory quotients right now another uh, human intelligence is a combi composition of abilities like reasoning that is reasoning decision making we all know whether to make a, to take a to take judgment whether to do good things or bad things etc that reasoning skills the god has given as a gift to the human beings and again human intelligence is a combination of abilities like perceiving perceiving the sense that it is a touch the feel of touch see the entire human body is equipped with uh, is uh, having more than uh, around 280 i think the senses right various types of senses are there for example we can perceive the moment we touch a mouse or we touch a anything we feel that we have touched it because there are uh, skin sensor tactile sensors all over the body 
suppose we touch a hot object immediately we withdraw our hand because there are thermal sensors all over the skin so the moment any hot object is touched the finger, the skin senses the temperature gives a signal to the brain and in turn gives a signal to the hands to lift back and to avoid burning of the skin so that means human being has got one of the good composition ability like perceiving the feel of sense touch smell the panchendriya what they call and human intelligence is also a combination of abilities like understanding of language you know that in the world there are so many languages in our country itself hindi english tamil telugu so many languages are there so we can understand different languages so human beings can communicate with each other in their own language either in english kannada or in hindi or any other their mother tongue similarly machines if you want to uh, communicate with machines you have to communicate with their own language that is in the form of zeros and ones of course there are lot of machine languages uh, the robotic programming languages which has come out in the past uh, 2025 year, 25 years again human intelligence is a combination composition of various abilities like feeling you have got feeling if we, any death happens in the family we feel that crying like anything so that the sense of feeling is there in the human human beings now these are the capabilities compositions that are available in the human human machine, human beings and what is this artificial intelligence now that's what i want to con- compare what is the ni versus ai and finally versus si what is this artificial intelligence it is the science and engineering of making intelligent machines like humans in all field we are just duplicating ourselves because we want to uh, make our life of the human beings more sophisticated more reasonable more sitting aram se sitting and doing the work uh, full fledged with full fledged automation that is what is called as ai we are making use of this concept it's a technology ai intelligence is a technology and it is a science of engineering of making intelligent machines it, artificial intelligence is real right what is that ai we can define in three th- uh, uh, methods one is it is the study of computer systems that attempts to model and apply the knowledge of the human mind whatever we are thinking in the natural phenomenon the same uh, phenomenon has to be thought by the machines like a problem is given to us we will solve it similarly a machine also if a problem is given to the machine it should think like us and it should solve the problem so that is what is called as apply the intelligence of the human mind and to solve like others a branch of computer science dealing with the simulation of intelligent behavior in computers using programming skills that is using machine learning languages right the capability of a machine to imitate intelligent human be- human behavior it can replica that's what i told if a problem is given to us we will solve if the same problem is given to a machine it should solve by itself but it is deaf dumb and blind so we have to incorporate the various types of programming skills how to solve that how to solve how to imitate the human behavior like the natural natural human being right ai is real prosthetics prosthetics means it is nothing but it is a medical world which is uh, given uh, for to the um, to people who are not having any hands or legs right they can that is called as artificial legs and limbs mind control prosthetic arm the user controls the arm through the existing nerves and it is sensitive enough to pick up even a piece of a piece of a piece of uh, paper then surgical system it is a surgical robot system that can do delicate brain surgery also enabling physicians to manipulate tools at the microscopic and the nanoscopic level again the space the mars the lander and the chandrayaan being able to navigate on the red planet the robot arm has been digging in the martian soil and ice for nearly 2 and 1/2 hours a day and send all the um, uh, work that has been done uh, from the pl- red planet to the nasa for investigation purposes then it can also ai can be also used for the as a digital secretary it will say good morning how are you etc a digital secretary that uses ai to understand spoken english commands and to learn over time any type of language can be converted using what is called as artificial intelligence and it can ai is real walk like a human being take a cup Uh, which is lying in the kitchen and put it in the dustbin having flexible joints driven by air cylinders it can also walk run and even jump exact replica of the human being will they assist us yes 
robots in the future they are definitely going to assist assist us in the military technology aiming defending and moving uh, the moving are done by simultaneously simultaneously by us but with the ai technology the tank will be able to auto detect enemy units and take uh, pro proper action it can be used along the borders this concept the technology can be used in the borders to save the life of the soldiers and the country countrymen it can also be used in the space explorations ai is used in the space explorations humans needs provision for food water recycling space radiation and psychological issues of confinement none of these issues concerns with a robot right and it can also be used with a, for underwater mining it is not possible for having mining staff on such site at um, uh, such depths that's what i told in the first day of the webinar it can be used for underwater explorations as hard as environments the hostile environment in which we cannot the human beings cannot work example space the underwater where major humans cannot work in such place these artificial humans working with artificial intelligence can be uh, placed medical research technology can perform delicate operations more precisely and efficiently a remote uh, surgery is also possible doctor sitting in california has done an a remote uh, surgery in los angeles so that artificial intelligence technology has enabled us into medical uh, into the medical field also we can also be used for the ai is real it can be used for the floor cleaning it performs the duties of a vacuum cleaner or a floor washer and also the gutter cleaner smart car what is called as a google car although we haven't seen smart cars in the street yet but the ai artificial intelligence which is real is developing at such a faster rate that a day is not so far when we won't need a driver at all just i think uh, shortly around 4 uh, or 5 months back in singapore they was called as agvs automated guided vehicles the automated guided cars has been uh, come uh, which was uh, there on the roads and just you have to tell to the uh, the, the driverless car mr car you have to go to this location particular that's all so it goes from the starting point to the ending point via different and it takes the shortest path avoiding all the obstacles in its path of uh, motion by making use of visual sensors the cameras etc that is what is called as the smart cars which is coming in i think by in another 3 or 4 car, four years the this uh, technology is definitely going to come out on the rolls that is by making use of ai ai is developing at such a faster rate we don't need a driver at all driverless cars they call it as right entertainment the robot dogs the asteroids the movies etc what is the future of ai the future of ai is unknown because it is just at a starting stage researchers seem to disagree disagree on a lot of the same issues but with the rate at which this technology is improving it is logical to believe ai will continue to get more and more sophisticated more you can't even imagine in many of the engineering colleges throughout the country uh, this uh, branch ai and machine learning is being introduced it has been introduced in uh, bmsit as a undergraduate course and it has been in many of the iits and the nits ai and machine learning is an mtech course which is getting full admission so this is a future of the ai it is just the beginning you can see a small picture there a robot is helping a disabled person feeding uh, feeding the feeding the food right now coming to the broad the, in the broader sense the two words ai uh, ai one is artificial one is intelligence both are slightly different anything which is not natural and created by humans that is artificial because we are creating that machine that machine therefore it is called as arti artificial it is just an hardware because it is artificial we are created by it is created by the human being it does not have intelligence so intelligence means the ability to understand think reason plan like humans so we are thinking the same concepts you put in that machine right so then that machine becomes intelligent therefore it's called as artificial intelligent robot is similar to a hardware and a software hardware is nothing but the robot and software is nothing but the intelligence so both uh, goes together like the husband and the wife 
So any code, any technology or the algorithm that enables a machine to mimic, reproduce by itself or demonstrate the human cognition or behavior is together what is called as AI. I think I made it clear. So AI even it's a two different uh, parameters. One is artificial, one is intelligence. Artificial is a robot because it is, it is not natural. It is created by humans. Intelligence is you are giving whatever you are thinking into the machine in the form of a programming skills. So the best, uh, the super robot or the most intelligent uh, natural robot is our human, human being. See, the nature produces the super robot in just uh, nine months, a um, baby. Similarly, if you want to design a human robot, uh, an artificial robot, it takes years, years together. Right? So I will define once again. What is that AI? It's defined as that part of computer science or information science with the characteristics with which we associate with intelligence in human behavior, understanding the languages, the different types of languages, learning, reasoning, problem solving, and so on. And it is concerned with the understanding the nature of intelligent action to perception. In the sense that, as I all told you, it is two words. One is artificial because it is created by us. It is intelligent because we are giving Kritaka Buddhi to them in the form of program. Okay, it should understand anything because even though any type of language you write, the program you write, whether it is in Java, whether it is uh, Keras, whether it is in MATLAB or Pascal or Android, or anything, it should understand should be converted into the machine level. It should be able to learn by itself, like us. It should be able to solve any problem which is given to us. Like how we solve so many problems in our life, maybe personal life, personal problems, maybe educational problems, or the children's problems, or the parents' problems. We know how to solve the problem because the brain is such a intelligent uh, device. It uh, gives us so many suggestions, m multiple, infinite number of solutions because it uh, says that in robotics, in the direct kinematics, in the inverse kinematics, uh, in the when you do the mathematical modeling, uh, the mathematical modeling says that when the number of equations is greater than the number of unknowns, then multiple solutions will exist. For example, if you want to move from point A to point B in the 3D space, you can do it in n number of ways because the number of equations equations to be solved are greater than the number of unknown. Similarly, this brain gives for a particular problem infinite number of solutions. And our brain is a reasoning. It has got judging capability. It selects the best possible solution or the optimized solution or what is called as the, uh, the uh, optimized solution that is the optimal distance between two points in a 3D space is a straight line. So like that problem solving techniques has to be incorporated into the system like we human beings. Our, whatever we are understanding, uh, so the same thing has to be transported into the machine. That is the understanding the nature of intelligent action to perception. So this AI it is also it could be coined as the ability of a device to perform functionally that is normally associated with human intelligence, such as reasoning, planning, problem solving, pattern recognition. If you use the computer vision or the cameras, then the pattern recognition comes into the picture. The perception, the cognition, understanding, the learning, the possession of all the um, uh, this the sense of sight, light, touch, this is called the perceptions, okay? And the collective attributes of a computer, robot, or other devices capable of performing functions such as learning, decision-making, other intelligent human behaviors could also be termed as AI. So the aim, the aim of AI is to develop robotic systems that appear to behave intelligently or think like humans. So this is described in developing robots that think as, so modern robots are there, na? so they have got all advanced features like vision it is having, speech it is having, then the tactile sensing is having, they are having all these roots in the AI reason. These are all the goals of AI. Robot can be, and robot can be considered as a fully automatic machine, or an artificial human being working with AI intelligence, right? We are natural human beings working with natural intelligence, or the born intelligence. The amount of sensors, the memories, the learning algorithms we incorporate into the artificial device, the more intelligent a machine becomes, or a robot becomes. I've given some of the uh, type of the intelligent robots in the world, the praise, the android, 
alloys, the terminators, the walking mechanisms, the ASIMOs, the ONDAs, the IBOs, etc. Thus, AI and robotics always goes together. So one is a hardware, one is a software. We just having the hardware and software is of no use. So both should go together. So AI and robotics always should go together. And how this AI evolved, the artificial intelligence evolved, start like the evolutions of the computers, robotics, and the nanotechnology, it evolved in stages, starting from the 1943, uh, uh, from the development of the artificial neurons by Pates, and the invention of the Alan Turing, the, the, the computing machinery. In, in fact, Alan Turing is called as the father of artificial intelligence. It was he who coined the word artificial intelligence. In 1951, AI was used in the games, in the Olympic Games, then 56, in the different conference, the birth of AI, Robinson's complete algorithm for logical reasoning in the form of uh, flow charts, etc., the decision making symbols and all. And in the, uh, the 60s, the early development of knowledge based systems, which is one of the sub branch of AI, and 82 in the 90s, then uh, expert system industry boomed. And in the, uh, again, in the end of the 19th, uh, 20th century, expert system industry birthed the AI winter, then 93 to present. AI is now using rapidly in different technologies and it is achieving its goal. Some of the examples where AI is being used is the smart and smart and similarly the haptics can be haptic technology can be used just like how human uh, um, hand is functioning. The same concept, uh, the intelligent concepts uh, can be used in the robot hand. You can see that each and every, as I told you that a human hand has got 27 degrees of freedom. That means you are, if you have to design a human hand, you would have to use 27 actuators and small, small micro motors are there at the joint or in some cases nanomotors also there. You cannot see which your uh, naked eye. That small, small nanomotors are there at the joints of the fingers, which moves at the one up to one uh, micron per degree step it is having. So this hand can act as an amputee and move the object. If anybody is not having an hand, this can then be inserted to connect it to the below the arm or the shoulder and that is directly connected to the nervous system using the layer of uh, sensing materials, right? The possible applications of the AI, you, you feel in the modern day because in the current uh, scenario, AI is being used in each and every field. It is in natural language processing, deep learning, simulation and modeling, the machine translation, the social network analysis, then the robotics, then the internet of things, image analytics, graph analytics, audios, the visualization, the personal assistance. In each and every branch, uh, the applications of AI is being found. So the current status of AI is AI can have many shapes and forms over the recent years from now. You might have heard of the modern uh, smartphones, the Siri or Cortana, then the search engines, the video games characters, the GPS, then uh, you know, voice recognition, robotics. Google has been a major play of AI, transcend, transcend and deep learning. Deep learning is a machine learning algorithm based on based on different uh, based on complex uh, AI algorithms, right? And what are the challenges in the AI? One is a computing power. How can you increase the computing power? The more amount of memory, the more amount of uh, what you call the programming skills, different types of probabilities, uh, different types of obstacle avoidance algorithms, different types of thinking to solve a particular problem. As I told you, if I want to move from point A to point B in the 2D space, or it can be in the 3D space, how many possible solutions are there? All types of permutations and combinations should be incorporated. So as if you incorporate in that manner, the computing power of the system will increase. Then the tolerance power, intuitive thinking, judging power. Judging power is like decision making. Like for example, we human beings, when we are driving an automobile or a car, we have got a decision making. We try to avoid the obstacles in our path of motion and move towards the destination. Similarly, if a machine is being there, that machine also should have decision making capability. How by making use of uh, algorithms or the flowcharts using decision uh, decisions in the if then pro else uh, else if then else uh, structured loops all those all those things.
okay the 15 goals of ai in robotics are one is a planning if we give any problem to us we plan and solve it that is planning and problem solving so these are the two main goals of ai in robotics natural intelligence and machine intelligence both are uh, co contemporaries one is the human being one is the machine right understanding we also think because any problem is given we think whether to do that problem rightly correctly or like that cognitive learning vision because we are having eyes the vision concepts comes into the picture we are speaking the speech is coming into the picture the reasoning the physiologic behavior so behavior see many people say that human a human the uh, one any person should have good hr skills that means the behavior plays a very important role then the expert systems the neural network the programming of the robots right robotics and ai are the same no the first thing to clarify is already told you that it is a machine which is equipped with intelligence right the first thing to clarify is that robotics and ai are not the same at all in fact both are two are entirely separate items robotics is a mechanical system it is nothing but the hardware ai is nothing but a technology or a series of programs so i have drawn it in the form of a venn diagram right in the uh, 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 common area is that is what is called as a artificial intelligent robots so robotics involves uh, building robot for ai involves programming intelligence and that means it like work like human in all fields so we have also got a body right and we uh, we have also got a body robot also has got a body we also got intelligence robot also has got a intelligence so the main advantage of why we have to use ai is to release humans from the stress and uh, to make a comfortable life so ai robots are the bridge between the robotics and the ai this is similar to hardware and software so you share a common platform as i already told you so all robots are machines which are controlled by ai so this ai is nothing but sensing techniques and a series of programs intelligent programs capable of problem solving techniques so robot not not artificially intelligent how artificially we give the intelligence into the machine is important so how do we give more number of algorithms we feed in more number of sensory data we feed in more number of programs more number of thinking capability the learning algorithms if you feed this much as input to the system the system will become more and more intelligent and one day it is definite that it will overtake the humans and that day has already come so robotics and ai always goes together like husband and the wife so it is just a theory ai is a theory the base object is a agent who is the actor and that is realized in the software so robots are manufactured as hardware the connection between the two is that the control of the robot is a software agent that reads the data from these sensors decides what to do next and then directs the end effectors to act in the physical world as i already told you end effector is the end of the arm end of the hand that is nothing but the fingers right to act in the physical world to do a particular work say it may be an industrial application do a welding buffing grinding or writing something or doing some programming etc so to conclude i can say that robotics and ai always goes together like husband and the wife and in you have seen a number of movies ai movies the most beautiful movie is the ai the i robot robot frank robot in the garden the metropolis and the war war games etc and the matrix the terminator the two terminator to judgment day it is the um, uh, for fight between the natural humans and the artificial humans that is the arnold's hollywood movie okay artificial intelligence is in use so some of the examples uh, i am showing it in next slides one is in you might have heard of the smartphones the siri go ahead just speak it will give out the result no need of typing it will be very very useful for people who are handicapped in the tesla car fully equipped with ai machines which can go, ai concept which is having around 800 kilometers per charge if one time if you charge it goes up to 800 uh, kilometers of course the cost is around 1 crore and everything is inbuilt the internet whatever the gps in your know, the phones phone connections and the fuel systems and the accident care systems the airbags everything is automated and there is a multiple plcs in that uh, uh, tesla unit cogito and netflix these are the various ai ai it's used 
ai concepts are used pandora the box weaver and the nest and even in the drones this uh, ai is being used right and amazon echo the entire amazon and current in also if you remember this uber uber is nothing but a platform it's nothing but a, a service provider that entire uber the, the ola everything is run using ai software right and that's how the rise of the artificial intelligence took place in the last 100 120 years it started in the 1900s and in 120 years you can see the huge rise of artificial intelligence from the natural intelligence so what is this artificial intelligence in fact there are four to three types one is called as a narrow intelligence another is called as a general intelligence another the final is called as a super intelligence that is called as a super robot expert system an intellect that is much faster than the human brain so i told you that in the gary kasparov used to think of only 6 moves a second that means in one second his brain iq was such that he can think of only 6 movements in the chess pawns but that machine was capable of thinking 1 million moves a second that much is a computing power okay creativity general wisdom social skills that is called the super intelligence this is fully related to the supercomputer the trace the mx2 etc general intelligence it is normal so that you see these three can be classified as students or faculties or uh, we human beings with uh, dullards with medium intelligent and super intelligent uh, extraordinary they call like that it is okay so narrow intelligence is that equals uh, human intelligence or efficiency to do a particular just he will do whatever is assigned he will do it yeah you do this work yes it will be doing but he doesn't have the capability okay if you tell him uh, do the wrong work he will do the wrong work but general intelligent is if you tell do a wrong work he will think hey, why this teacher or why the parent has told the wrong thing no no i will not do it and he will think and he will do the right work so that is general intelligent super intelligent is extraordinary so there is of course this is uh, you might have also seen that lot of super uh, so, super kids they want they call it as uh, three is ani agi and asi okay and the man versus machine this is what is called as the uh, natural intelligence versus the machine intelligence a team of international scientists believe that the ethical division between the humans and the robot must be made very very low that is a gap should be less lessened of course it is being lessened in the this, uh, in the recent days so yeah, recently there was a fight between gary kasparov and the deep blue uh, to which a robot was connected okay and finally the gary kasparov lost the battle 06 and the machine 160 that proves the machine intelligence versus natural intelligence that's what i call it is a supernatural intelligence so the supercomputer used to think of 1 million moves a second whereas kasparov could think of only 6 moves a second so that is the advantage if you go for the ai the artificial intelligence this one this what one of the scene in which gary kasparov when he was uh, defeated by the ibm deep blue uh, by uh, 06 the first time uh, in his life he was defeated by a machine a machine defeated him so that shows how much intelligent a machine is becoming day by day because with the inter- uh, with the uh, in development of the rapid uh, science engineering and technology the intel processor the y gen first generation second generation third generation now seven recently in the shortly in another one or two is the 10th generation will come the processing speed has been increased the parallel processing concept that have come not only parallel processing quad pro processors have come into the market uh, into the market so it is being multiplied the processing concepts have been multiplied so uh, when uh, match was uh, uh, held between gary kasparov versus the natural intelligence and the uh, artificial when the machine intelligence he lost and he just uh, um, uh, bent his head in its one and that was seen by millions of people around the world spectators watch a broadcast of the final decision game in which the rematch between uh, the caspro and ibm uh, computer deep blue took place and of course he was uh, cornered and he was uh, fully in the machine checkmated him and there was no alternative for the caspro to move even uh, any pawn and it was checkmated in that the final final round that is the machine intelligence versus the natural intelligence so that is how the brain is being outsourced that's what we are giving our what we have learned the learning concept into the machine 
So our experts all over the world, researchers are mixing and matching artificial intelligence and genetic programming to create a species of software that will comment with the words. So this new concept which has come, the genetic programming, the cloud com computing programming, the quantum dots computing, uh, this has uh, taken the programming of the systems to a new level. So these are all higher level languages. They're called as HL, high level languages. So genetic programs helps the, to solve the age old problems of getting a computer to do what it has to be done without telling it how. No human intervention is necessary. It passes the acid test when it becomes human competitive like that. For example, when uh, we take up an examination of three years, three hours in the final semester, semester students take up an examination of the final uh, semester uh, of three hours. So whatever they have learned, they will uh, do it and nobody is help, helps them. Similarly, once you teach a work to a machine, it should do it by itself and no intervention is needed. needed. That is uh, how, uh, that is what is called as brain bees being outs out outsourced. Genetic programming is helping to solve the age old problems of this one. Okay, that is one of the advantages. Uh, in fact, uh, in one particular year, the examiners from the United States, uh, Patriot and the Trade Organization, they were left speechless when they came to know that they were reviewing intellectual property created by a machine. That is one of the advantage of this uh, system. It uh, um, acts like a human in all fields. Whatever human is thinking, the same thing he is also thinking because that much uh, sensory aspects, the programming skills and the learning concepts are being introduced. Now, I'm go you're going to take a small break. In five minutes, I'm going to give a brief introduction to what is artificial intelligence and robot in a nutshell. So please clear the hear this video. It's a very nice video which is being, so you know the basics of how AI machines will work, right? Statistical processing is there, speech recognition is there, and it's nothing but AI is a branch of computer science, and the natural language processing comes into the picture, and you can say the test of reasoning, the perception, all these comes into the picture, and the computer vision comes into the picture, and the symbolic learning, uh, learn by itself, by using of the course. The image processing comes into the picture. Pattern recognitions. Pattern recognition, which is similar to the image processing. So machine learning. Full of neurons. Using neural networks. So these are deep learning concepts using the artificial neural networks. CNN, ANN, RNN.
this is in the current program. As you see, there are two ways we are important. One is symbolic print, and another is data print. On the database side of machine learning, we need to feed the machine lots of data before it can run. Big data, data analytics comes into the picture. Classifiers. One or two or even three dimensions is easy for humans to understand and learn. Machines can learn many more dimensions, but even hundreds or thousands. That's why machines can look at lots of high dimensional data and determine patterns. Once it learns these patterns, it will make predictions that humans can't even come to most of them. It can be done with machine learning and it needs to learn how to do things. Classification. As an example, some information about customers to assign new customers to the group of the animals, then you are classifying the customer. You can use data to predict if they're likely to be fed to a competitor, then you make that prediction. There's another way to think about learning algorithms, which for AI. You train an algorithm with data that also contains the answer. Then it's called supervised learning. For example, when you train a machine to recognize your friends by name, you need to identify them for the computer. You train an algorithm for data where you want the machine to figure out the patterns, then it's unsupervised learning. For example, you might want to feed the data about celestial objects to a machine and expect the machine to come up with patterns that they know. Like so, you can give any algorithm a goal and expect the machine to try and uh, to achieve that goal. Then it's called reinforcement learning. A robot's attempt to climb over the wall until it succeeds is an example of that. This is a very good uh, video about uh, the learning uh, concepts in AI, different types of uh, AI, the supernatural intelligence, natural intelligence, etc. Now, how the AI proceeds, as, had, as it is being clearly told in that small video about learning AI in five minutes, AI emerged strong in the 50s, where the uh, electronic circuitries, the memories, the computing power increased. Then AI, arti, early artificial intelligence stirs excitement. Then machine learning is an application of AI. As deep learning is also again an application of machine learning. All three are interlinked with each other. So machine learning begins to flourish. Deep learning breaks, breakthroughs drive the AI boom because by making use of deeply learning by making use of ANNs, then the CNNs and the RNNs. You know. One of the important topic in AI, what I've told you, the first goal, what I uh, told you, that is uh, uh, the task, robot task planning and the problem solving. So that I'm going to clear it now here. Robot task planning, what is that? <coughs> robot task planning is one of the important, most important problem in artificial intelligence with respect to the robotics. Uh, and this is what is called as a task planning problem. So what is a task? A task is nothing but a job or an application or an operation that is going to be done by the robot. It can be a stationary robot or it can be a mobile mobile robot. So planning means it is deciding on a course of action before acting. So before ro the robot does a particular task, how the task has to be done or performed in its workspace has to be planned. This is what is called as robot task planning. So normally the task will be specified by the user. So this task can be considered as a problem that has to be given to the robot to solve. Like for example, uh, the teacher gives a problem or a task to solve by the student. What will the student do? Immediately he will start solving the problem? No, first he will write down the data, what is given in the problem. Then he will start analyzing what formula I have to, what formula I have to put 
so that i'll substitute calculate and get the answer or the solution so task is nothing but a job or an application nothing but a question like question and answers so a theory question or it can be a practical numerical or it can be a laboratory experiment or it can be any ta any task uh, for example in the day to day life that can be done by the humans or any machine etc so it is clear that a task is nothing but a job or an application or an operation that is going to be done by the robot planning means deciding on a course of action before acting before the robot does a particular task how the task has to be done in its workspace has to be planned that is what is called as robot task planning right task will normally be specified by the user you do this task you do this task like that okay so a plan is nothing but a course of action for achieving the goal so however how the problem has to be solved has to be planned properly this is called as robot task planning you are solving using it is nothing but a problem solving technique the second important goal in artificial intelligence so problem solving technique is one of the important branches or goals of ai so the task is nothing but a problem right how to solve it that is called as problem solving technique how you are solving using ai using machine learning programs or using deep learning programs etc for example this is what i have stated in the previous one when a problem is given to the human being to be solved first he or she thinks about how to solve the problem then devises a strategy or a plan how to tackle the problem then only he or she starts solving the problem so this is what is called as natural intelligence the born intelligence right so in the similar manner how do you incorporate in the machine in the similar lines the machine has to follow that is what is called as ai artificial intelligence or nothing but robot task planning problems uh, <coughs> robot problem solving techniques so many of the sub topics in robot task planning are currently under active research in the field of artificial intelligence one of the best task that can be done by any robot any intelligent how much intelligent the robot is that uh, is for example the chand if you take the chandrayaan the robot will be in the spaceship from the earth earth space station the um, uh, spaceship goes up to the mar uh, uh, up to the moon from the moon it has to eject out using a particular trajectory using slow motion and fine motion this is entirely related to path planning or the task planning and then the robot lands on the mar on, on the moon and then it descends and it does some experiments the task is to go from the earth to the moon how it has to be done this has to be done using robot problem solving techniques or using various types of algorithms that is the main branch the main point in artificial intelligence is nothing but problem solving technique ai is nothing but problem solving technique or a task problem solving techniques right lot of research is going on in this robot problem solving techniques a typical robot problem solving it consists of doing household work say it has to open a door pass through the various doors to uh, to the room to get a home so this has to be taken into consideration when it is moving from the source to the destination it has to open the door so many people will be coming the various obstacle it has to consider and all the, the front end of the scene the front image of the scene has to be considered so the robot vision plays a very important role so in any typical formulation of any robot problem or a task we have a robot that is equipped with an array of sensors as i told you that one not one sensor should be there in a human in a my robot and a set of primitive actions that it can perform in some easy way to understand the work if the same work say this uh, same work see we are feeling uh, thirsty what you do from our room we go to the kitchen uh, and uh, take a cup of water and drink and we keep it in the sink and come back is the same thing if you instruct a machine a hey, machine go to the kitchen get me a cup of water so that is nothing but a task so how the task has to be done has to be planned in its workspace this is what is called as robot task planning and suppose if the task is very very complicated what is the complicated task say going to the planet to mars or to the moon come out descend with a particular trajectory and do specific task that if the task is very very complicated then you will break it into a number of sub task or the sub problems like in a company a mega project has been taken 
that mega project will be broken into a number of sub sub modules small small uh, projects and finally it will be integrated to form the over, overall uh, this one that is one and uh, suppose if you if your program length is big what you do you go uh, go in uh, go with respect to the sub routines you make one sub routine uh, you call one program for one moving in straight line one program moving in a curvature another sub routine and in the main program you will call everything that is the main task is being subdivided into a number of tasks if it is being if it is being uh, complicated so the robot task planning deals with the goals of the manipulation task rather than how to achieve these goals so what is the goal the goal is nothing but the destination or the end of the task that is the place position pick and place pick is the source the source is the starting position that is the reference okay and the task planning refers simulation software such as the task planners to achieve these goals what are these task planner this is nothing but ai based machine learning algorithms right and planning should be reg certainly regarded as an intelligent function of any robot the complicated suppose if the task is very very complicated it should be broken down into a number of sub task eh? like going to the planet moves etc similar to the projects that are being undertaken in the software company what they do the big project is being divided into number of project leads small module 1 module 2 module 3 etc then you will integrate and uh, go for and um, integrate and compile and get the main uh, pro project uh, work uh, done that is if the task is complicated right so this task planning how will you achieve this task by making use of task planners what are the task planners it is nothing but ai based machine algorithm machine learning algorithms or you can say as in ai there is one separate uh, um, subject or the subject called as the apgs that is called as automatic program generators you just give the input it will give out the output that is called as automatic program generator okay so coming to this robot task planner they are also called as a machine learning algorithms or the automatic program generator so this task planners are nothing but planning systems which are used to plan various types of robot motions and do a particular task okay and this task plan is a black box it makes use of a simulation software to do a particular task so the input to the task planner is nothing but the task specification output of the task planner is nothing but various types of robot motions that are needed to do a particular task definitely you are going to get n number of uh, solutions because if you ask a robot to move from point a to point b it can do in n number of ways so the when you do the mathematical modeling as i told you in the inverse kinematic problem uh, the number of equations to be solved are greater than the number of unknowns when this concept appears in mathematics definitely multiple solutions will exist and the robot will definitely take the shortest path solution you might have heard uh, of how to get the shortest path using registrar's algorithm by using uh, uh, weights right so the task planner is similar to the automatic program generator used in artificial intelligence is nothing but a machine learning algorithm so input to the generator is nothing but the task to be specified right? and output of the generator is nothing but various types of solutions and that robot will pick up the most feasible solution or the most optimized solution and you should know what are the task specifications say so i told you the robot has to go to the uh, moon or it has to go to the market get a, uh, um, some vegetables or it has to do some industrial application do some welding painting grilling or do some surgery etc you have to give some specification data na if the data is given then only you can solve the problem correct if the data is not given you cannot assume certain data in case of uh, this one suppose in our uh, this one and all uh, some of the constants and all in the problem solving techniques we assume that is not possible here okay task specifications has to be given by by the user and from the robot vision system by making the feedback mechanism in order to solve a particular problem and arrive at a solution so this task planner requires a large amount of internal and external data in order to do a particular task so what are those task specifications internal and external environment is needed position of the object and obstacles in the three dimensional space and the scene the foreground scene is needed and the background scene is needed this can be given by the vision system and the online continuous feedback data is needed and the position of the joints in the intermediate stage is needed suppose you move your hand from a point a to point b the path changes the trajectory changes okay every time the motor starts uh, uh, rotating either in the clockwise direction or in the anti clockwise direction and you have to control the speed of the motor so that you go along the desired trajectory or the path so you need the position of the intermediate uh, joints the description of the objects that are being manipulated where it has to place the object 
then the environment in which the task has to be performed it can be a nuclear reactor environment in which it has to uh, take some nuclear waste and dump in the um, bin or some steel industry or it can uh, in order to lift the molten iron steel and in a sar it, the environment can be a space exploration where the robot has to move on the rocky terrain of the moon or the mars to pick up the rock samples and take the pictures and send them to the earth or it can do some experiments and it should have the initial state of the environment that is the source the reference position or the pick point and the final state or the goal or the destination or that is also called as the place point the source in the destination in for example now you leave your house and you go to the college so your house is the source that is the point and you the college you are going na that is called as a destination from the source to the destination you can go in n number of ways you can go via air you can go via different different roads etc so that Uh, the work that is a ta- that the task is going to the college the task that is going to the college is to be done by what is called as the task planners nothing but the machine learning algorithms okay specifications the starting point and the ending point so this is the overall block diagram of the task planner i just i told you it is just, just a black box right input is the task specification output is the task of the job to be done so that task planner is nothing but a simulation software okay that software is nothing but automatic program generator uh, generating programs are nothing but the ai machine learning programs of course you have to give the environment in which the system has to perform the particular task then coming to this motion see one best example i will give you right now you leave your house okay and you go to the college now what you do the moment you leave your house when you are sitting in a car or a two wheeler slowly you are raising the speed and uh, uh, then one certain speed is reached uh, since the destination is at a far off place you go at high speed that is called as grass motion and when you are reaching the college it is slowing down that is called as the fine motion so fine motion grass motion fine motion so that is the motion planning techniques they call it as so the chandrayaan that is the best example the chandrayaan was a big failure because of the problem in the motion planning techniques the motion planning was not proper when it was about to descend around 2 kilometers since so the motion pl- um, um, planning failed and the, it has the, it couldn't reach its destination so motion planning also called as path planning and also called as a navigation problem is a computational problem. problem that is used to find a sequence of valid configuration that moves the object from the source to the destination from your house to the college and this is the important problem that the task planner should do and that is why it is called as the path planning first is the planning simulation then it is a implementation everything you are doing on the computer okay you are simulating the path on the computer once it is successful then you are transmitting to the reality stage using the robot implementing it real time implementation so when an execute command is given to the robot to do the task first the ram reaches the object using fine motion slowly then picks it up using fine you cannot go suddenly and pick up the object otherwise what happens the fingers might uh, hit the table or the object might get damaged so picking up the object should be very very slow that is using fine motion then since the, once you pick up the object the, since the uh, destination or the goal is at a far off distance from the source then use the grass motion that is moving at a high high speed and when you are nearing the goal that is the place position nearing the college use the fine motion to place the object so this fine motion planning and grass motion planning should be planned first as it should take care of all the obstacles during its journey best example of the motion planning is the chandrayaan or the mars uh, rover or the earth or the moon see remember this path planning of course we are doing in two dimensional that is on the earth's crust here here in case of chandrayaan and mars that is a mars rover it is three dimensional path planning three dimensional path planning is very very tough every point you are getting the three dimensional partial derivatives to move from the source to the destination so the pick and place operation should always follow the trapezoidal speed profile curve which i had shown in the below that trapezoidal speed profile curve is slow at start and go at maximum speed slow at uh, slow down ramp down deceleration this is best example of how you go from the house to the college eh? increase the speed go at maximum speed when you are reaching the college slow down this is called as a trapezoidal speed profile the same concept has to be used in the machines uh, picking up and placing up moving from the source and going up to the destination and during this journey 
from the source to the destination if any obstacle comes in its path of motion that you have to take care you have to circumvent the obstacle move towards the uh, destination that's why join robots in the machines ai is used for path planning or the motion planning techniques the moment you move your hand or move your any point on the tip of the finger the uh, mathematical modeling equations goes on changing the trajectory goes on changing the path goes on changing so start of the path and the end of the path so there are two th three types of motion planning techniques one is the gross motion planning again there are two types configuration space and the freeway space the second is the fine motion planning there are two types called as a guarded motion and the compliant motion the final one is called as a grasp motion planning with a safe grasp reachable grasp secured grasp okay see i have shown you one of the this one here when you go to pick up the object you go using fine motion so see I'll, if you get confused i can give you a beautiful example uh, in your electronic laboratories the um, power supplies are there there are two buttons one is the coarse another is the fine so fine is used for small variations coarse is used for large variation similarly to pick up the object you use fine motion eh? and to place the object you use fine motion in between you use grass motion okay and i give you know the best example of a grasp see how the object has to be grasped or grip uh, gripped properly you take two fingers you in the class what you do you take the duster and when you take the duster you will hold along its length not along its width because if you hold uh, hold the duster along its width the finger has to be the two fingers has to open wide stress will be on the fingers therefore you hold it straight and rub the board that is one of the efficient method of grasping that is called a reachable grasp planning uh, technique i shown the various methods of grasping uh, here okay and uh, this is one uh, grass motion planning i have shown here right of course this was done as a one uh, mtech project by our students see the goal is there the source is there reference point and the goal of course this is two dimension it is then using um, the, in the matlab environment so from the source to the goal it has to go and in between there is an obstacle the object is nothing but the triangle how will it go it has to circumvent the obstacle and go towards the goal obviously there are two paths one is the path one another is the path two so obviously it selects the shortest path the moment you leave the source go on counting the pixel number pixel point so along the path one say it is around uh, 85 pixels and along path two it is a uh, 90 pixels obviously the 85 pixel wala will be the shortest path, uh, shortest uh, path that's what i have shown here in the below in the this one you can see there is a b is nothing but the obstacle a is nothing but the object which has to be moved from the source to the goal right that Uh, what you do you circumvent move around the obstacle generate a buffer zone so that when you are moving very close to the obstacle it should not hit that is one of the method of grass motion planning uh, technique another and i have shown here to move from the initial point to the goal of course you can do all this using any type of uh, simulation uh, software okay moving from the source to the goal and here i am showing four cases case 1 case 2 case 3 case 4 what is the main first one to remove the object from the source to the goal in spite of three obstacles object 1 object 2 object 3 see this is similar to your uh, traveling from the college to the source uh, from the house to the college and college to the house back see when you are going from the house to the college so many obstacles will come in the path the human beings will be coming the cows animals will be coming the other cars other vehicles will be coming so they are moving obstacles some will be moving obstacles some will be stationary obstacles here the path planning will be become more difficult if the obstacle is moving you need there are two cases here to consider one is the obstacle moving along with you eh? another is obstacle moving in the opposite direction to you so that path planning will become more difficult if the obstacles are moving here i have considered the obstacle as only stationary so if it is stationary the best method is you can move around the obstacle you can move around the left you can move right and you can move in between the obstacles obviously you are moving in between the obstacles that is the shortest path so you can see that in the second case there is no 
space for movement why because the gap is very small since the gap is very small that gap is less is lesser than the dimension of the object so there is no space it cannot pierce and enter otherwise the walls of the object will get uh, uh, collided with obstacle and scratches will occur so this is what is called as the gross motion planning technique generation of shortest path using configuration space method uh, by move, circumventing the obstacle or moving in between the obstacles to generate the shortest path again i am showing suppose for one example i have shown the below the square the go, uh, source is below the obstacle is very big and the goal is like that now you cannot uh, go, go in a linear fashion you can go straight and in some cases you have to rotate the part object so the space between the wall of the obstacle workspace area and the obstacle is very less so you to rotate the source point and then you have to go that case the rotations will come into the picture so translations are performed along the freeways rotations are performed at the junctions of the uh, junctions of the uh, freeways so this is one of the best method of uh, doing the gross motion uh, planning i have shown you is a beautiful method then the second method what is called as the freeway method obstacle one is there obstacle two is there so you uh, measure the midpoints between the two obstacles right and you join all those points you get a locus if you move along that locus then there will be no collision of the object with the obstacle so it is equidistant because the object is equidistant from the obstacle another one simple example i'll give you see in a traffic signal uh, there is a three lane in the first lane one car will come Come and stand. In in the third lane, uh, very near to the divider, another car will come and uh, sit, uh, stand. Now what you do? Exactly, you come and stand in the second lane, in between the car one and the car two. That is what is called as path planning naturally using natural intelligence. The same concept has to be uh, <coughs> utilized in the machine. So the path obtained is the shortest path. if we use the midpoint method or the freeway method and it will be a obstacle collision path because it is equidistant from the obstacle definitely there is no chance of collisions and this method will work successfully when the workspace of the environment of the robot is cluttered fully cluttered with huge number of obstacles like in a market zone like in a market zone you have to no, move from one me. point to the another point you can make use of this midway method so gross motion mapping is also called as the freeway method so one of the important method of solving the gross motion planning is to go on searching all the available paths in the workspace of the robot okay once you search all the available paths then decide the shortest path using uh, various types of techniques such as the heuristics method right the space in between the obstacles is referred to as the freeways along with the robot or the object can move so the translations are performed along the freeways and rotations are performed at the junctions of the freeways so this freeway method of designing the gross motion path is called as a gross motion planning now you can see there are two parallel paths straight line translation is performed along the freeways now after it yeah, reaches the end you have to take a turn you perform a rotation so rotations are performed at the junctions of the freeways this is one of the design which i implemented uh, in uh, by using the shortest path algorithm in fact i have designed my this it has come out as one of the transaction paper around 10 years back and i have designed my own uh, gross motion planning using the mathematical uh, modeling right of course this took a lot of time the mathematical equations so you can see there p1 p2 is there okay that is one edge of an obstacle p3 p4 is there that is edge of another obstacle now i have to move from one point to the another point how you have to move you have to move in such a way that the object will not collide with the walls of the obstacle then the distance between the obstacles has to be measured mathematical models has to be created that has to be given as input to the algorithm or the task planner simulation software the machine learning algorithm it has to move along that particular path and definitely there will be no collision of the object with the obstacle this is what is called as gross motion planning and fine motion planning techniques coming to the fine motion planning techniques okay there are two types one is called as a guarded motion another is called as the compliant motion so what is that guarded motion moving at high speed what is that compliant motion moving at a slow speed okay now i'll give best example read that guarded motion is defined as a movement of an object in a specified direction towards the goal surface until an event occurs what is that until an event moon down it is moving down the object is moving down it is to be placed on the work surface the moment you keep the object on the work surface an event has occurred what is that event the force has been generated reverse force has been generated what is the use of that reverse force that reverse force is an indication to the machine 
to stop further placing of the object avoid crushing of the object piercing into similarly what you do you to take a cup of water keep it on the table the moment you keep it on the table the moment you keep it on the table you feel a reverse action and reaction the reverse force what is that reverse force that is an indication to the brain to stop for the placing the object that is called as guarded motion the same concept you have to incorporate in the mechanical machines now this is guarded motion suppose if there is a this complaint motion will come into picture so for example in a golf ball in the golf ball the golf uh, golf keeper what he has to do he hit the ball if the ball goes very very nearer to the hole it's small uh, some small uh, gap it will not go inside the wall so what you do in that case you use the complaint motion what is that complaint motion that additional motion that is required by the object along the contact surface in order to place the object in the desired configuration after the guarded motion has been performed that means complaint means it is nothing but a sliding motion until an event occurs take the topmost uh, diagram what i have designed uh, see using the guarded motion it is coming down but what is your main goal the main goal is you have to keep the block at the end of the corner so what you do some misplace has occurred the for example if you ask the your yeah, motor to move is to stop at exactly 95 degrees that motor will not stop at 95 degrees it will stop at 97 degrees because the inertia rotational inertia will come into the picture so using the guarded motion you keep at the point d from the point d you just to slide and keep it at the point c this is what is called as complaint motion this complaint motion and guarded motion can be best uh, example i can give you in the aerodynamics in the aeronautics take for example in helicopter so helicopter what does it do it directly lands 90 degrees on the earth crust on the helipad and stops that is 90 degree motion that is called as guarded motion on the other hand you take a aeroplane and when it is landing when the aeroplane is landing using the guarded motion it touches the runway that is at the point d and after it touches that uh, point d and it slides and it goes to the um, um, uh, point to be uh, point to be stopped so the aeroplane landing is nothing but a complaint motion the helicopter landing is nothing but a guarded motion so motion planning techniques finds a lot of application in automobiles aerodynamics kinematics kinetics statics everything comes into the picture the same this is how you incorporate thinking in the mechanical machines in the form of learning algorithms because of the because one of the major drawback uh, the it was proved that the decision report what the isro has given uh, the motion planning the biggest failure was in the motion planning techniques of the chandrayaan because of the failure of the motion planning techniques the trajectories were not designed properly the motion planning was not uh, designed properly as a result of which it has to uh, face uh, defeat right coming to this motion heuristics what is this motion heuristics it is a method of searching an obstacle collision free path in the free workspace of the robot from the source to the destination by making use of search techniques used in ai what are those such techniques it is a graph theory and or graph the chain coding techniques the state space search techniques the best first breadth first the semantic networks the petronets the digestros algorithm used in artificial intelligence why are these search techniques used these search techniques are used in artificial intelligence in order to find the path from the source to the goal that is called as motion heuristics heuristics means what to search what to search an obstacle collision free path from where to where from the source to the destination so from the point a to the b you just uh, get all available paths then using motion heuristics you find out the shortest path one of the method of finding the shortest path is a digestros algorithm wherein the traveling salesman's problem wherein you give weights to different paths and then obviously the path which gets the least weight will be the shortest path are you best Uh, 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 diagrammatic representation i have given you c r s is the source the and g is the goal or the destination where you have to go right in the bottom figure you can see that to go from the source to the goal there are so many ways we can go path number 1 path number 2 path number 3 path number 4 5 6 7 n number of paths are there because the number of equations the kinematic inverse kinematic equations to be solved are greater than the number of unknowns okay now what you do 
you design all available paths using learning algorithms one is moving in between the obstacles one is moving around the obstacle one is moving around and in between like that you design all types of paths once you design all available paths in the 2d surface or the 3d surface then make use of motion heuristics to find out the shortest path obviously the path which gives the least weight is the shortest path take for example along path 1 you the moment you leave the source start counting the number of pixels because it's x y plane see along the path 1 it is 40 pixels along the path 2 it is um, uh, to some 80 path 3 the obviously the less number of pixels will will be the shortest path so these motion heuristics is nothing but search techniques which are used in artificial intelligence to find out the shortest path from the source to the goal it is nothing but a machine learning algorithm and sophisticated motion heuristics comes into the picture when the workspace is cluttered with obstacles full uh, obstacles then in that case you have to go for sophisticated wide path motion heuristics that is you cannot in some places you cannot hold the source along the width it has to be like a duster you have to hold it because there will be no space in between the obstacle for movement okay moving in between the obstacles is the shortest path this is the this is now you can see in the bottom one this is a wide path motion heuristic sophisticated wide path motion heuristics because this is lot of zigzag curves like in a gut section you are uh, moving okay again another one uh, deep learning algorithm i sh i show here there is a robot which is moving from the source to the goal so it has to go from the point a to the goal uh, i think many of your uh, faculties might send the students to the robotic tech fest where there will be a maze solving problem to move from one point to the another path in between the obstacles point a b c d e to the goal then this path planning comes into the picture motion planning comes into the picture three types of motion planning gross motion fine motion and the grass planning problem here in the topmost figure you can see to move from that blue color the red color and the green color there is path number 1 and number path number 2 obviously easily you can make out that path number 2 the green color is the shortest path because the and the obviously the robot will try to decide uh, um, move along the uh, shortest the shortest path in another case you can see moving from point 1 to point 2 so there the blue color robot moves round the obstacle now here it cannot move in between the obstacle because there is no space correct na and also environment comes into the picture motion control perception localization mapping the cognition and path planning all this comes into the picture remember this is nothing but the two dimensional movement and if it is a three dimensional movement like a aeroplane or a chandrayaan uh, project then the three dimensional path planning will come into the picture three dimensional path planning is more difficult than the two dimensional path plan path planning lot of uh, equations will come lot of solutions will come lot of um, 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 routes will come to move from the source to the destination okay and a small video which i am showing uh, here uh, how to Each 
number, but it's a range of 28 times 28 pixels. Now, that amounts to a total of 784 pixels. Here on, the core of this unit neural network is where the information processing takes place. Each of the 784 pixels is fed to a neuron on the first layer of our neural network. This forms the input layer. On the other end, we have the output layer with each neuron representing a digit within its layer consisting of the event. The information is transferred from one layer to another over connecting channels. The key has a value attached to it, and hence is called a weighted channel. All neurons have a unique number associated with it called bias. This bias is added to the weighted sum of input reaching the neuron, which is then applied to a function known as the activation function. The result of the activation function determines if the neuron is activated. Every activated neuron passes on information to the following layer. This continues up till the second last layer. The one neuron activated in the output layer corresponds to the input digit. The weights and bias are continuously adjusted to produce a well-trained network. So, where is deep learning applied? In customer support. When most people converse with customer support agents, the conversation seems so real, they don't even realize that it's actually a bot on the other side. In medical care, neural networks detect cancer cells and analyze MRI images to give detailed results. Self-driving cars, what seemed like science fiction, is now a reality. Apple, Tesla, and Nissan are only a few of the companies working on self-driving cars. So, deep learning has a vast scope, but it too faces some limitations. The first, as we discussed earlier, is data. While deep learning is the most efficient way to deal with unstructured data, a neural network requires a massive volume of data to train. Let's assume we always have access to the necessary amount of data. Processing this is not within the capability of every machine. And that brings us to our second limitation, computational power. Training a neural network requires graphical processing units, which have thousands of cores as compared to CPUs. And GPUs are, of course, more expensive. And finally, we come down to training time. Deep neural networks take hours or even months to train. The time increases with the amount of data and number of layers in the network. So, here's a short quiz for you. Arrange the following statements in order to describe the working of a neural network. A, the bias is added. B, the way that some of the inputs is calculated. C, specific neuron is activated. D, the result is fed to an activation function. Leave your answers in the comments section below. Three of you stand a chance to win Amazon vouchers. So hurry, some of the popular deep learning frameworks include TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras, Deep Learning 4J, CAFE, and Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit. Considering the future predictions for deep learning and AI, we seem to have only scratched the surface. In fact, Horse Technology is working on a device for the blind that uses deep learning with computer vision to describe the world to the users. Replicating the human mind at the entirety may be not just an episode of science fiction for too long. The future is indeed full of surprises. And that is deep learning for you in short. If you enjoyed this video, do like and share. Now, you might have heard how deep learning is used for the motion planning techniques. I'll come to the machine learning, which is nothing but a type of expert system. So the deep learning is a part of the machine learning application. Machine learning is an application of AI. Deep learning is an application of ML. Right. What is this machine learning? It is an application of AI that provides system the ability to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed like we human beings. Right? It focuses on the development of computer programs that can access data and use it to learn by themselves. You teach the system how to do a particular task. Any type of problem is given, the robot will do or the system will do because it has all type of learning algorithm, obstacle avoid algorithms, you know, in similar to the human beings. And 
this machine learning is nothing but an application of ai that provides the system ability to automatically learn and improve from experience see we human beings has got a very good fantastic uh, experience method of learning the more if you uh, one time you teach the subject second time third time fourth time you will become more perfect similarly the more uh, experience the systems will learn from experience enabling the computers to tackle the tasks that have learned until now only which have been carried out by people till now all the tasks were being carried out by people now the same task will be carried out by the machines using this machine learning algorithms similar to the uh, human beings natural intelligence and the artificial intelligence what is the primary aim of ml the primary aim of machine learning is to allow the computers learn automatically by itself without human intervention or assistance and adjust the actions accordingly similar to the human beings so there are five important machine learning applications in robotics one is the computer vision imitation learning learning at the see the children uh, sees the parents and and uh, by looking at the parents they'll start uh, uh, imitating that is what is called as imitation learning and supervised learning unsupervised learning reinforced learning these are all uh, the types of machine learning concepts the assistive in the medical technologies the multi agent learning group study single student studying and the group uh, of students studying that is called as multi agent learning see we have seen medical uh, sorry machine learning as a buzzword for the past few years the reason for this is the high amount of data production by application the increase of computation power in the past few years and the development of better algorithms for understanding cognition and uh, recognition see some of the machine learning uh, the concepts that are in use are prediction image recognition speech recognition medical diagnosis financial industry and trading prediction see we can predict for example today it is going to rain because of the previous data like that prediction it is, can be a non causal system right machine learning can also be used in the prediction systems consider the loan example uh, that to compute the probability of a fault the system will need to classify the available data in groups the um, uh, what we call the score the cricket scoreboard that you can also predict in 10 overs you can uh, hit this many runs in 20 overs 30 overs that is prediction algorithm is there which is a part of the artificial intelligence image recognition machine learning can be used for face recognition in an image as well uh, video recognition image biometrics the separate category for each person in a database of several people speech recognition translation of spoken words medical diagnosis to treat cancerous tissues financial industry and training the google ceo sundar pichai he tells so machine learning is a core transformative way by which we can rethink everything we are doing sundar pichai says the ceo of google in fact the entire google now is working on ai the main especially the gps you can see that gps is fully fledged artificial intelligence based machine learning based deep learning based they are just by telling you to you to give the destination it will take you to the particular uh, location so sundar pichai says that machine learning is a core transforming way way in which we are thinking in which we can think uh, think everything a small 2 minutes video i'll be showing about what is uh, what is machine what is machine learning there is a banana in this picture traditional programming requires human to define a set of instructions to recognize a banana this would require tons of code and leave plenty of room for error with machine learning we just need data a tons of data to be precise lucky for us thanks to the internet and smartphones we have a tons of data in machine learning instead of following hard coded instructions program can learn from data or adapt its behavior according to experience we can divide machine learning into three broad categories supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning in supervised learning we need to provide a data set labeled samples of training data the program will analyze them and should be able to correctly determine labels for new data this technique is used for example in speech recognition or by youtube to recommend you a video unsupervised learning 
is used when we have unlabeled data. The most common unsupervised learning method is cluster analysis. It's able to find hidden similarities, patterns, or groups. Unsupervised learning methods are used, for example, in bioinformatics for genetic clustering or face recognition. And last but not least, reinforcement learning. This technique is like teaching your dog new trick. You provide the program feedback in the form of reward and punishment based on which it can determine ideal behavior or strategy within a small video I learned what is a machine learning, the basic concepts, the types types of learning. So it is a field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. In simple sense, it is based on prediction of data, prediction analysis, and is concerned with the computer programs that automatically improve their performance through experience. Like we humans, how we learn from experience and do a particular task. Like it can be a painting or a garakelstan or a uh, machine worker or a tank cleaner By experience, it does the work because he has been learned. Similarly, if more experience, the machine will learn by itself based on the prediction data and it can do it do the particular job that is what is called as machine learning or I can say it is a subfield or computer science that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly per perform in fact Arthur had defined this or it is a computer program is said to learn from experience E it is a vector with respect to some class of tasks again a vector T and performance measure P again a vector if its performance the task is measured by P improves with the experiments training data and the prediction data Right, and the small video of um, I think the video is not there. And the, what are the main advantages of ML? The main advantages of L, uh, machine learning are learning and writing algorithm. It is easy for the brain, but it is tough for a machine. Because the moment you can, we can take a pen when you can start writing notes. But the same concept has to be implemented by a robot writing notes. It is very tough. You have to give in the learning mechanism. You have to break it into a number of sub tasks, sub programs, etc. That's what I have written there. Learning and writing an algorithm is one of the main advantage. It's easy for humans, but it is tough for a machine. It takes some time and good amount of training data for a machine has to be given. Implementation automation. This is easy for a machine only because the machine has learned, uh, uh, learned the process because one million images has been fed in, trained data is there, trained data sets is there, and without any fatigue where the human brain can't do it. That's why machine learning is always linked with the big data, and this is a deadly co combination in uh, combination in, uh, in, in nature. So why we have to go for machine learning? Because to develop the systems that can automatically adapt and customize themselves for individual users, personalized news or mails factor, remove the spam mails and only go to the inbox, discover new knowledge from the large databases, data mining, which is another uh, artificial intelligence based in the computer science, market based analysis, then the ability to mimic human and replace certain monotonous tasks with some uh, requ some requirement from intelligence, I told you going to the Chandrayaan, planet Mars, and underwater exploration, working in a huge industry, and written recognition. Then develop systems that are too difficult, expensive to construct manually because they require specific detailed skills or knowledge due to a specific task. Knowledge based systems, in fact, that is one of the coursework subjects in the PhD. Knowledge based systems in the computer science, knowledge engineering bottleneck. Now, what is this machine learning? First, data, training data, then learning algorithm. Once it is being trained, uh, you just give an input, any type of uh, answer you get. Like uh, how the teacher teaches the students the entire course, entire subject. Uh, and when the subject, uh, since the student has been trained, uh, any problem is given, any query is being given to the student as he is trained, he is going to get out, get the answer. answer. Again, there are three types of, uh, one is, uh, the super intelligent one is a middle intelligent one is a dull intelligent according to the methods of uh, e methods of ai right you can see here uh, in this slide that the learning the apples which group it becomes suppose you give all these data sets apple belongs to which group of apples then the tomatoes the animals which group does the object belong to 
all these has to be trained using the convolution neural networks or the artificial neural network or the recurrent neural networks so the three big data parameters in the machine learning are the data the devices and the services right and this information is very much essential for the machine learning uh, to develop the uh, to develop complex uh, machine learning algorithms or path planning uh, this one so the basic steps used in the development of any machine learning algorithm are five one is collect the data prepare the data train the model uh, evaluate the model and improve the performance how will you improve the performance just give a query because you already trained and evaluated it will gives out the right results so these are the five important steps for performing any machine learning application right and here you can see one of the beautiful video of uh, this one got a clear cut picture about what is mi what is the machine learning in the different types what is supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning how does a robot do it? the motion planning techniques the same thing i uh, block diagrammatically represented in the form of a graph one is a supervised one is a, uh, unsupervised and one is a reinforcement learning that is what various concepts comes into the picture big data feature recognition one is a trained one is a untrained 
okay the real time decisions it has to take the robot navigation will be taken place the game ai the population growth the market forecasting the diagnostic the um, feature uh, feature detection etc so by using all these concepts uh, the machine learning algorithms can be designed in such a way that the robot can do a specific task intelligently like humans and can work like humans in all fields so in this overview of supervised learning algorithm what is there an ai system is presented with a data which is labeled which means that each data tag has got the correct label so what is our main goal our main goal is to map that is uh, so that when you have a input data x so that you can get the predicted output variables y now here is a classification techniques there are spams the two spam mails one this one and that spam mail has to go to the spam folder and the um, uh, exact mail has to go to the inbox so you can make use of if you train all this uh, then the same concept will be holding in the uh, email, email or this one so as shown in the above example we have initially taken some data and marked them as spam or not spam so this label data is used by the training supervised model and this data is used to train the model so once it is trained we can test our model by testing it with any type of new test mails and checking that the model is able to predict the right output so we are going to get the not spam mails and the spam mails in this one and uh, this is like uh, similar to the artificial neural networks in the cnn first a trained data set will be there then you give a give a query input and it will compare with the trained data set and you will get, get uh, give the correct uh, output okay the uh, types of machine learning problems i already explained i already showed in that video supervised unsupervised in the region. is that a cat or a dog all those things right and here this is the supervised learning model okay machine learning algorithm predictive learning algorithm and you are going to get a exact exact label all this is uh, feature based right then types of supervision once it comes the classification the regression comes into the picture so it has to be classification problem is when the output variable is a category say it can be a red or a blue you can uh, uh, do it by making the various types of classifiers svm classifier is there knn classifier is there a lot of people will be using this in your research purposes regression techniques is there then this regression problem is when the output variable is a red value which is a dollars or the weight so once the supervision learning is being done then the classification or the regression comes into the comes into the picture right then in the unsupervised model what happens an ai system is presented with the unlabeled uncategorized data and the system algorithms act on data without prior training no training at all directly give the input you should go get the output the, that is what is called as unsupervised learning that is the student is not taught any subject at all directly if we ask him to take up the exam that is similar to unsupervised learning algorithm and the output is dependent upon the coded algorithms what you have developed and the subjecting a system to unprivileged unsupervised learning is one of the best method of uh, testing the artificial uh, Intel again the block diagrammatic representation of the unsupervised model. Okay, so this is uh, again the same thing and unsupervised the same. Uh, it's uh, the clustering and the regression or nothing but the association comes into the uh, picture and uh, the same the clustering the reinforcement coming to the last one the reinforcement learning. A reinforcement learning is how the child has learnt at the earlier stages in the childhood. He can remember. that is what is called as reinforcement learning a reinforcement learning algorithm or agent learns by interacting with the environment the agent receives the rewards by performing correctly and penalty for performing or for performing incorrectly if he performs correctly some reward points are given if he performs incorrectly some penalty has been put say minus point or plus point so agent learns this without intervention from a human by maximizing its reward and minimizing it uh, penalty you can make use of the objective cost function the linear programming fundamentals that is object uh, minimization of the cost and maximization maximization of the efficiency so that concept can be used here to get the predicted output so it is this uh, type of learning is nothing but a type of dynamic programming uh, that trains the algorithm using a system of rewards and puni and, uh, and punishment so one example i have given suppose if it follows the fire path minus 50 points if you follow the other path get plus 50 points that is the concept so here you can see that the agent or the robot has given two options what is the two option it's a path with a water or a path with fire so either he has to move to the left or the robot has to move to the right 
a reinforcement algorithm works on a reward of a system. Suppose if the agent use the fire path, then the rewards are subject uh, subtracted minus 50, and so some value which is uh, prescribed by the given by the user based on the specification and the agents turns to learn that it should not avoid the fight it should avoid the fight path it should not go near the fight it should not take that route otherwise the parts will get uh, burned and if the chosen water path if if it had chosen the water path or the safe path then some points would have been added reward points are given plus then the agent would try to learn which path is safe and which path it should avoid that is what you know i think some of the students uh, when um, um, they are going for robotic tech first, the maze solving problem, where if there is a fire kept going and uh, uh, shutting off the fire. So that concept also is make uh, this re uh, the reinforcement algorithm concept can be used in similar condition. It is basically re uh, leveraging the average uh, rewards point so that the agent improves uh, uh, environment knowledge to select the next action. Okay. This is one very good uh, video on uh, reinforcement learning from the, the that you should avoid the uh, you can see that there is a camera and this learns by itself this learns by itself, it has to place a cube, one cube above other cube, other cube, other cube. So first, uh, it is a fully autonomous learning to build a tower of blocks. So it takes around 30 trials, so many number of trials. So first it keeps the um, uh, violet color, then it keeps the red color, then it takes uh, and keeps the blue color. And now remember the compliant motion, the guarded motion and all what I've explained will come into the picture here. So no direct access to the joint config. You see, every joint is being uh, uh, controlled. But in each and every joint, there is a motor. The motor, what does it do? It uh, varies the speed so that the design is uh, met. What is the design trajectory? Keeping it on the blocks one above the other. This is called the reinforcement uh, learning or the probability density functions, making the PDFs and all uh, to keep it uh, one above the other. So once this uh, it has learnt uh, any type of uh, number of blocks you keep, it will keep it on the uh, this one. You can see there that is the one added advantage of this particular uh, this one. So, so what are the steps to solve a machine learning problem? One is get data gathering, collect data from various sources. This can be a data set. If you are doing image processing uh, research, first you have to take the data set from the online, from the hospitals, etc. Then the data pre-processing. Clean the data, remove the noises, etc. Pre-processing, segmentation, histogram, equalization, enhancement, all those things will come into the picture. Feature engineering, extraction of the features, the feature extraction will come into the picture. So making your data more useful. Algorithm selection and training. It may be ANN, CNN or SVM or any type of algorithm. Select the right machine learning algorithm and get the output making the prediction and evaluate the model and the task is being solved. What is the task? Robot task planning. So data gathering first, then the data pre-processing, then the feature engineering, similar to uh, the, um, feature extraction, right? Then the feature uh, engineer again, the types of machine algorithms, the last but one step which has been explained. So I think uh, you people who are doing uh, research, you might have used uh, the SVM method for the classification purposes, the say one SVM and the multi SVM techniques, the discriminant analysis, the KNN, the K nearest neighbor method for the classification purposes, the Navy based method for regression, you are used ensemble decision tree, the neural networks for the clustering, K means the fuzzy C means clustering, the hierarchical Gaussian mixture, again, the neural network. Eden Markov a model can be used. Now again, in these all these three, a new type of uh, concept has come, which is called as the, I think uh, I have forgotten that one. It's a new, uh, um, some search technique has come. Uh, the, so some type of search technique that is more powerful than uh, all these uh, uh, techniques. So the supervised learning, unsupervised learning, training, and without tra uh, without training. Only the thing is, the supervised learning will give you very good results, accurate results, because you are trained. 
that the student has been uh, trained and he'll be able to solve the problem unsupervised learning no training at all and you'll get moderate result and reliable results you sometimes you may get the solution or may not get the solution in uh, unsupervised type of uh, learning okay the algorithm selection and training also depends on what type of problem whether it's a image processing problem whether it's a robotics problem or whether it's a machine learning problem or any type of uh, some communication problem protocol you have to design is in digital communication or for analog communications uh, or uh, for uh, cognitive radio networks or for uh, software defined radios uh, you are using uh, it depends on the type of that is the last but one uh, step so you can make use of these various types of supervised algorithms so svms decision are uh, random forest that's what i have forgotten random forest gives you a very good result and the k nearest neighbors neural networks or the deep learning unsupervised learning you can make use of pca principal component analysis the k means etc then reinforcement you can use the q based learning statistical based learning can be used for this uh, and to predict the particular task one and give the get the output so the algorithm selection training the main goal is to make the correct prediction as possible the incremental improvement is a predict and adjust by varying the weight so that you get the predicted uh, out outcome so making the prediction the two phases this is similar to your ann the neural network training first there will be a training phase then there will be a uh, testing phase the prediction phase is nothing but a testing phase so training phase what you do you collect all the data sets or the labels or the samples and you train hundreds of images you take uh, hundreds of uh, routes you can take uh, uh, objects uh, then feature extraction obtain the features keep it as a stored database that is what is called as a trained model or the machine learning model again you get a query this is similar to your biometric face recognition and your fingerprint recognition same concept uh, is and uh, it compares with the trained uh, trained um, model and gives out the result whether the part is being present in the database or not so summary the machine learning is an intelligent use of data to answer the questions and it is enabled by the exponential increase in computing power and data because more the number of the capacity of the ram is increasing the algorithms are increasing sensors are increasing the big type of problems are the three main problems supervised unsupervised learning and there are five steps i've already told you gather the data pre process the data feature extraction karo select the algorithm make the prediction and get the output right and this you can say that the applications one is in the banking one is a telecom one is a retail then to identify and to obtain uh, correct correct results the second one um, uh, being biometrics at the biomedical in the medicine for screening diagnosis and drug delivery drug discovery and security face recognition fingerprint iris recognition dna fingerprinting it this uh, this uh, artificial intelligence can be used so third important uh, application of machine learning being in the computers on the internet troubleshooting and writing recognition conversion from uh, and writing text to speech conversion the brain then the internet it ranking spam filtering text categorization test translation or translation recommendation this is nothing but fully related to google search engines the search cortana all those things uh, this one the, the uh, big speed etc the brain uh, brain machine interface the data acquisition frequency detection command translation and get the particular output so what are the current research trends in robotics current research trends of ai and machine learning in robotics are in fact there are five areas right five areas uh, you have to become more uh, yeah, perfect in order to make the current applications more efficient and probable that includes vision and ai helps in robots to detect items they have never seen before and recognize the object uh, uh, with far greater detail grasping robots are often grasping items when they never seen before with ai and machine learning helping them determine the best position and orientation to grasp an object this best example i can give you in that reinforcement learning the robot was taking the blocks and keeping one above the other so grasping plays a very important role one of the motion planning techniques that is the motion control the motion planning uh, are nothing but the motion control each and every joint has to be controlled you cannot move at a faster rate if you move at a faster rate then you will overshoot the destination and you will not uh, and the positioning will be inaccurate so machine learning helps the robot with the dynamics 
the robot dynamics comes into the picture the kinematics and the kinematics will come into the picture and you should obstacle avoiding has to be done in order to reach the goal or keep the block on the uh, block one above the other data is needed very much ai and machine learning both helps the robot understand physical and logical data to proactive and act accordingly supply chain logistics like example this uh, best is uber and uh, this can be used uh, this one okay and deep learning in robotics this deep learning in an application of uh, machine learning machine learning is an application of artificial intelligence so what is this deep learning it is a part of a broader family of machine learning methods it is based on ann with representation learning and it can be of any three types and it is a subset of ml in ai and that is network capable of learning unsupervised from the data that is unstructured or labeled so deep neural networks are they also called as you can also be called as deep neural networks it is a machine learning technique a type of machine learning techniques in the brain similar to the neural and uh, similar to the natural intelligence and artificial intelligence so this new deep learning technique teaches a computer to filter the inputs through layers to learn how to predict and classify the information for example if you take the ann there will be number of there will be an input layer there will be an output layer and there will be number of hidden layers the more number of hidden layers the more training will be done that is the meaning of that uh, filter the inputs to different layers using ann in the cnn and the observation can be in the form of images text or sound and the inspiration for this uh, deep learning is the way the human brain filters the information right this is one very beautiful video which has been uh, um, uh, developed using the concept of uh, what is called as uh, deep learning just see how identically the systems are being uh, doing the work so it takes the see the uh, task planning the motion planning will come into the picture that is the grass planning the grass motion planning the fine motion planning all the parts will come into the picture you can see there it is taking everything keeps sitting another uh, this one so this is what is called as the machine intelligence or nothing but uh, deep learning or algorithms what you are writing so that it will do uh, it will do a specific job and this is one of the project which was being done at iit gauhati uh, by one of our group of students they had gone for internships sir you can see it's a very nice project which has been done so that the robot what it is doing is it will uh, there is a pipe uh, uh, there is a pipe which takes the the brings it to the uh, yeah you can see it right? and there is a pipe so all the robots are standing the task one task is to move the stick hold it and bring it to the destination and by avoiding the obstacle there is an obstacle in between so it has to lift circumvent the obstacle move above the obstacle and it has to come to the destination you can see that this is the task it is kept in this one and all will be moving as soon as the touch sensor perception Uh, that's what is called as uh, perception attached to the robots it's the sticks the robot stopped like how we uh, uh, when we uh, pick up a particular object a duster or something we stop for their gripping because our skin fingers uh, feels that we have touched the object the same concept uh, machine learning has to be incorporated in the machines yeah it is lifting and all the four robots lift the stick and it is going towards the destination um, uh, that, that is the source to the destination move forward with the stick avoiding the obstacle so the sensors will be in such a way that the distance in between the uh, um, uh, the distance from the obstacle to the pipe is lessened yeah and it is coming to the this one and it reaches the destination and keeps the pipe so put the stick down so that is the source this is the destination right now the last part is what is called as a multi agent learning working in groups multi agent learning is the use of machine learning in a multi agent system 
uh, agents improve the decisions via experience and he, like uh, this for example what i showed four robots working together that is a multi agent like similar to the group study students studying in group so that they will learn by experience one student if he is not knowing the other student will teach that is called as multi agent learning so an agent learn as to learn how to coordinate with other agents best is the project work so four students will be in a project work that is multi agent learning so that artificial intelligence will result in distributed artificial intelligence when the multi agents multi agent comes into the picture because the intelligence will be unified with all the four members of the project groups that distributed artificial intelligence will be used for different problem solving agents with their own interest in the group that is why this multi agent learning is becoming more and more popular in the software industries by doing the projects in together this is what i have shown here you can see that the robot uh, in a, um, doing so welding operations in an automobile number of robots for the inspection purposes and two robots interacting to move from the source to the goal avoiding the obstacles so these are best example of multi agent uh, this one and at the same time before going from the source to the goal the motion planning has to be done it has to take the shortest path and it has to avoid the obstacles calls in its path of motion so all these types uh, of uh, machine learning algorithms such as the supervised unsupervised and the reinforcement learning the deep learning concept has to be incorporated into this machine so that it does the required job to move from the source to the goal without any obstacle and okay, this is one such uh, um, what you call the swarm intelligence uh, of course it is the extension of multi agent learning is called as uh, swarm intelligence working together in uh, groups uh, that is the human intelligence uh, uh, you can see that in the human intelligence what happens one person will work single fellow will uh, be studying he will be jealous some students have got the habit of doing group study that is human organization similarly one robot will work it will do only one work here you can see an intelligent multi agent system a group of robots will work together so that the output uh, you get uh, can be done at a faster rate like one farmer plowing a field of 1 acre and 10 farmers plowing the same field uh, of 1 acre will give you fastest output that is one so that is the multi agent systems this make use of distributed artificial intelligence and it has the characteristics of various types of mass mm, then the remote uh, method invocation is their resource location is there but and also distributed problem solving distributed learning will come into the picture um, then uh, in uh, i think in mtech some of the colleges they kept uh, reconfigurable computing distributed computing uh, similar to that so how a particular problem can be solved by a number of modules which cooperate in dividing and sharing the knowledge about the problem and its evolving solutions that is what is called as distributed uh, artificial intelligence which is used for multi agent uh, this one that's what i have shown here the problem discussing the sub problem if the problem is very complicated break it to number of uh, sub problems and then solve the problem and this multi agent uh, um, programming is concerned with the behavior of a collection of possibly pre existing autonomous autonomous agent aiming at solving a given problem a loosely coupled network of problem solvers etc so that the problem will be solved at a faster again best example of a multi agent system in a um, uh, stock verification uh, this one so what what are the challenges the challenges are since it is working in groups uh, parallel processing will come into the picture the cloud computing the wireless communication obstacle avoidance uh, learning algorithm so many uh, things comes into the picture which is not done with a single machine if it is a single machine there would be no problem so now it is a multi many objects are together many systems are working together uh, like in a um, uh, college like in a project group so how to formulate describe decompose and allocate the problem and synthesize the result among a group of intelligent robots that is the challenging task okay and how to enable the agents to communicate and interact what communication languages and protocols they have to use and when to use what to use say for example in a project group one will be a north indian one will be a gujarati one will be a andhra one will be a tamil and one will be karnataka so which language language the group the multi agent group has to use either english or what language so all those uh, things will come into the picture when you are going to formulate a multi agent problem so this
these are the various uh, action plannings will come into the picture knowledge is there because in one for in one project group one student will not do any project at all simply will be just sitting and another project another student will be more active like that so it depends on the individual agent, agents and uh, these are the challenges that you have to take when you have to solve a multi agent problem so this multi agent problem evolves into the final stage what is called the swarm intelligence or the uh, smart intelligence which is the last stage of intelligence which comes into the you now this era of uh, swarmer star that is working in groups collective behavior or uh, decentralized self organized systems are natural it may be natural human beings or it can be artificial human beings that is called as swarm intelligence or smart intelligence this concept of the employed work on artificial intelligence it can be it is a, it can be used along with artificial intelligence it is nothing but the enhancement of artificial intelligence multiple ais will result in swarm ai this was the uh, introduced term was introduced by this uh, scientist gerardo and jang wang in 85 in context of cellular robotic system that is the robotic systems is working groups uh, this smart systems consist of typically of a population of similar agents or robots interacting locally with one another and with the environment inspiration comes from nature especially from the biological systems you might have heard of the swarm bees recently in delhi there was a huge amount of swarm uh, locusts etc right Come from that that inspiration is coming from this what is that smart intelligence it is the emergent collective intelligence of a group of uh, simple agent like the ant ant colony optimization optimization using those concept the same behavioral theory of the small animals can be incorporated in the machine take for example this ant the master ant moves forward and all the ants will be going behind the, that is follow the leader that con that is what is called a smart swarm intelligence multiple robots working together that is swarm intelligence okay i give you show a swarm of robots a swarm of ants a swarm of drones a swarm of birds so there are three steps in how we can design the swarm intelligence systems for the robot identification of the analogies use the biological concepts and the it the programming skills are the machine level machine learning uh, concepts understanding then engineering model simplification and tuning for the it application to arrive at the particular outcome so how we can design again the three concepts see imagine if the robots could exhibit swarm intelligence working in uh, groups the collective effort is more that's what is called this is fully related to teamwork in your uh, nba you can know that the teamwork is one of the po right if that po that is the team effort also fetches you good marks okay good uh, outcomes outcomes similarly if the robots thousands of robots use the uh, uh, together as a swarm uh, can do the work and that increases the artificial intelligence as a result of which swarm intelligence comes into the picture so last one is what is called as imitation learning learning by himself okay that is um, uh, the given is a demonstrator the goal is to train a policy of mimic demand imitation is the ability to recognize and reproduce another action for example you take the children when the children are very small na what papa mummy what they will do they will take a pen or a pencil and write a b c like that and looking at that the child also will start learning that is what is called as imitation learning so imitation learning is a means of learning and developing new skills when observing these skills performed by another agent that is the father or the mother so that is what i am showing here imitation learning the person will uh, raise his hand looking at the hand the robot also raises its hands by making use of this is what is called as a master slave programming that concepts can be made use of in the imitation learning okay so why should you care because the one of the advantage of imitation learning is uh, there is no need of programming just by movement only the robot learns uh, and all these tasks will be saved in the memory and it play back that's why it is called as a playback uh, robots also here you can see the robot is performing an imitation learning now what the human being is doing he is uh, taking his hand uh, and keeping the object from 1 to 2 position number 1 to 2 so when he is moving from 1 to 2 the path or the trajectory goes on changing okay and what is the robot doing using image processing concept of so the computer vision ai concept and it is seeing how the person is doing so it is imitating the same thing so that is what is called as imitation learning
okay and the invention so this is what is called as the prosthetic and so the master and the slave the master is there what is the master is doing is moving his finger in and out the moment he moves in and out the robot also moves his finger in and out because from the human and a chain of optic fibers are being connected to the artificial hand so that when the human being is moving his hand all the reflexes will be save uh, connected to the artificial and that also will be performing the finger movement and it is storing so this is what is called as the master slave programming right and finally i would like to come to the research trends that are uh, what you people can uh, do in the ai machine learning deep learning cognitives and uh, this one the top 10 uh, top 15 research trends in ai that may dominate the next decade is the chip learning iot then automated machine learning cloud computing cyber security and uh, personalization in real time ai powered technology to drive more devices ai cooperation hr the financial marketing the ai in health care to identification of corona etc ai based block technology led automation automated main machine learning quantum computing so these are the top 15 uh, research trends where you can do lot of research and you can uh, produce some particular output or write a proposal then uh, top 10 research trends in machine learning one is uh, digital data the data analysis big data then the ann then the convergence of iot and machine learning together the natural language processing nlp they called it as for the customer supports the voice recognition the face recognition health care the computer vision the video surveillance the social media online technical support now the online courses what the faculties are doing that was the best method see earlier last year if you have seen that the online classes that much uh, importance was not at all given see how the technology has improved from zoom webex google meet so many uh, concepts of ai in machine learning has been used voice processing video uh, voice the voice over internet protocol so all these are top machine learning trends where you can do lot of research again the combined ai and machine learning top 10 in the impact business in the next decade is the ai is helping combat to um, find out a vaccine for the covid 19 machine learning framework competition business forecast reinforcement learning ai driven biometric security solution automated ml explainable ai that is uh, i think in the first uh, day of the webinar i told you about the robots teaching in the class so what is it? that is the entire thing is ai full world concepts have been stored in that robot in the memory and whatever question is asking it is uh, yeah, telling the answer that is explainable ai conversation ai generative networks convergence of iot and ai these are the combined ai and ml top 10 so in the graphical representation i have shown you ai computer vision then the nlp is the national language the natural language processing the data sciences the learning concept the logistics vrl has got a very good uh, team of logistics in the speech uh, recognition then um, uh, data vision validation then uh, recommended systems then the data mine, data mine this is in the graphical version i have shown you in the future of the intelligent or the smart machines to conclude the robotic engineers are designing the next generation of robot to look feel and act like humans exact replica of the human dance like humans do gymnastics that much flexibility and to make it easier for us to warm up and to a cold machine just sit in your place the robot will come do its work and do the cooking open the bureau uh, uh, sorry open the door get the paper etc exact do the kitchen work all those things can be done in fact lot of ai machine learning data sciences etc is being incorporated in the japanese you can see in majority of the japanese homes all the kitchen work is done by robot itself yesterday also i showed you in boston dynamics a robot takes a cup and puts it in the bin so the reality looking air and skin with embedded sensors will allow robot to react naturally in the environment for example if we touch our human hand or something we feel that sensitivity but the robot has not got that sensitivity biosynthetic material is being designed now biosynthetic material and a layer of biosynthetic material is 
a layer of biosynthetic material is woven over the hand so that it will become exactly like humans and exact replica of the humans working with high intelligent quotients which can compete with humans in all fields but it is very very difficult because the machine uh, programming concepts are the uh, computations are becoming more and more as i told you the gary kasparov six moves whereas the machine one million moves robotics in public and national security that is all guarding the border robots in education teaching robots at home domestic as co workers autonomous cars then robotics for entertainment healthcare robots instead of doctors now we can make use of the robot i think in many of the some of the bangalore based hospitals for sanitization and all the moment uh, uh, i think it was in some manipal hospital or something uh, uh, the moment a person patient comes it gives a sanitization uh, this one and post so there you can make use of healthcare robots then medical robots domestic military service robots etc so concludes you finally i would like to conclude this three day webinar so i given a brief brief overview of the artificial intelligence and its relevance to automated systems and what is machine learning which is a branch of ai application of ai again the deep learning and swarm intelligence which are child the parent and the child the boss or the parent is the ai then the ml then the dl then the swarm intelligence imitation learning multi agent learning all these are the children grandchildren of the artificial intelligence so and also i have incorporated various trends in ai machine learning language so that the new people can work on this take up the art topics and write some proposals and submit it to the funding agencies get some funded projects and do some research and bring some good uh, innovation techniques go for a patenting and uh, bring the name of the institution and this is the future of the robotic machines which is very helpful to the society thank you all my dear participants and the entire team of vidyavartaka college of engineering headed by the hod and the principal and his entire team for giving me a three day webinar for uh, making this ai machine learning from the macro to the micro into the nano robot nano stage thank you one and all over to the uh, team sir thank you sir thank you very much and thank first of all uh, sir this is uh, cm patil uh, heading the department oh. of uh, enc from vidyavartaka college of engineering thank you oh. sir thank you very much it was thank very thank you very much thank you very much uh, sir it was very interesting informative and also impressive also sir the way oh. you present the recent hot topics and uh, the content wise uh, like robotics ai and ml and uh, uh, live videos audio it was extraordinary sir yeah yeah thank you thank you very much thank you very much so thank you thank you very much uh, we okay. seek your cooperation for future events also sir oh, thank you very much thank you thank you one and all thank you one and all thank you sir thank you very much sir right right bye We thank all the participants uh, for their active participation. Uh, the recorded uh, sessions will be uploaded to YouTube link. Thank you, one and all.